Okay, we are recording. Um, my name is Rachel Ogletree. I am an academic specialist here at the UCEAP system-wide office in Goleta, California. And I am joined today for this presentation by my accent colleague, Francesco. Uh, so Francesco, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and get us started? Absolutely. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to this presentation on the UC Design Study Abroad Programs in Europe. Again, my name is Francesco Gagliardi. Uh, that's how you pronounce my last name. It's kind of complicated. Uh, and I am the uh, Campus Outreach Liaison for a, uh, a study abroad organization called uh, Accent Global Learning. So basically what we do, um, we have been working in the field for many years and we work with over 60 US colleges and universities. Um, specifically, we have been working with UCAP for the last 20 years. And we work usually with our partners on developing the academic curricula uh, for the programs. We provide on-site ho on housing, student services, and health and safety services. Today, um, we, will look, we will have a look at some of the options you have in uh, uh, six different European cities, Rome, Florence, Syracuse, Sicily, uh, Paris, Madrid, and London. I will give you some general information about uh, the cities, their daily life, the study centers where you will take your classes, and finally, all the programs available in each location. Since we have limited time today, I would like to encourage you guys to visit the UCAP website uh, to get more detailed information about the programs that you might be interested in. Before we uh, get started, I would like to emphasize that all programs in this presentation are unique and specifically designed for the University of California curricula. You will use the city as, as your classroom. In fact, most of the academic activities will be on site and only a part will be held in the classroom. For each program, I will also give you a few examples of on site activities that are part of the courses. Now, let's dive into the presentation and we're going to start with my birth country and my birth city, Rome, Italy. As most of you already know, Rome is the capital city of Italy um, and it is located in the very center of the country. Its strategic position allows you to easily travel both to the northern and southern regions of Italy. It is also a hub for many European airlines and is very well connected with all 27 countries in the EU. Rome has a population of about 4 million people, but during the spring season especially, it reaches 6 million, including the tourists that come into town from all over the world. The city is organized in uh, uh, neighborhoods that we like to call Rioni, and it is obviously one of the most important historical and artistic hubs in Europe. So let's talk about your normal day in Rome. You will be living in either a student residence uh, or shared apartment or with an Italian host family. The apartments are all located in the historical center, in the, specifically in the Prati and Trasteve neighborhoods. Uh, classes will be held Monday through Thursday, and occasionally there will be some site visits on Fridays and, and uh, Saturdays. Uh, you will be taking classes three to five hours a day on average. However, there will be always a lunch break in between. Uh, this in the picture is the uh, um, building where uh, classes will be held, the Axon Rome Study Center. Uh, the building itself was completed in, completed in the 1600 and is named Palazzo del Banco di Santo Spirito. It is located a few steps away from Piazza Navona, uh, which is one of the major squares in Rome, and hosts six classrooms, a UC library, and a structural kitchen, uh, which is used for cooking classes, and a computer lab. So let's see which programs are available in Rome. We'll start with the Communication Studies Fall Semester. Uh, this, the title is kind of self-explanatory. Here you can see some of examples of classes that have been uh, offered in the past. Some examples of on-site activities offered in this program are uh, a visit to the de marketing department of, the Italian, of Italian brands such as Italy and Verde Pistacchio for the public relations class, a visit to Cinecittà movie studios and a guided tour of the Circus Maximus in the fake news class, and a visit to the Colosseum and Roman Forum led by your faculty member for the ancient Roman work and, uh, and play class. The other fall semester available in Rome is sociology in Rome. Um, some of the visits included in this program are visit to the International House of Women and the Urban Tour of Rome for the sociology class, a series of guest lectures with Italian journalists and writers for the, for the Italian media class, and a visit to Galleria Borghese Museum for the Bernini and Borromini in Baroque Rome class. Uh, here we go, another one. This is a... Um, 
program that is available as a winter quarter uh, or a spring semester, and it's called Art, Food, and Society. You see a lot of subjects right there. In fact, it's a multidisciplinary program that focuses on social sciences and humanities, mainly. Uh, some of the visits uh, and guest lectures, which are part of the courses that we list right, right, right here below, are a guest lecture on cultural challenges in social work for the social psychology class, um, a meeting and a guest lecture by Tobias Jones, who is a very famous European journalist, actually British journalist and writer about soccer, football and fascism in Italy. And then the last one for the love and sexuality in early modern Italy class, which is a um, uh, Renaissance art class, there's a visit to the Bracciano Castle, which is 45 minutes away from Rome. The last program that I'm gonna mention um, for Rome is the Linear Algebra in Rome, which is a, a six week long program in the summer. Um, basically in this program, you will be taking a Linear Algebra course plus an elective course that you can choose. This is, um, as you can see, sort of ideal for all STEM majors that have not taken Linear Algebra yet and want to do it abroad. Okay, so let's move to another Italian city, uh, what we call the Cradle of the Renaissance, Florence. Uh, Florence, like Rome, is a smaller town with a population of about 400,000 inhabitants. However, it is always very busy because of the millions and millions of people that visit the city every year. Uh, Florence is probably the most important center for all studies on the Renaissance in the world. In Florence, students can opt for shared apartments or to live with an Italian host family. Um, students usually in the morning walk to class uh, crossing the Arno River, to reach the neighborhood where the study center is called Oltrarno. Uh, the piazza where the study center is located gives the students uh, several food choices for breaks or lunches. There are bakeries and popular osterias or pizzeria and ristoranti. Uh, on the way back to their apartments, they usually stop for a gelato break overlooking Ponte Vecchio, the old bridge. Uh, other times they spend time walking around Florence's narrow streets. They are full of high fashion stores or local designers boutiques. Classes are, uh, even for Florence, usually held Monday through Thursday. The Florence Study Center in the picture is located in, as I said, in the Oltrarno neighborhood. Uh, Oltrarno means across, and Arno is the name of the main river that runs through the city. So it means literally across the Arno. You can see the building uh, in the picture. The name is Palazzo Guadagni, and it was built in the 1500s by a family of uh, silk merchants. The study center is equipped with seven classrooms, a library, some study areas, and a computer lab. Okay, here we go with the first Florence program that I would like to present, which is the Made in Italy program. Uh, it's available in the summer, uh, fall semester, winter quarter, and spring semester. It offers courses focusing on uh, several subjects, and it's ideal for students majoring or thinking of majoring in communications, business, and marketing. Uh, obviously, all these programs are open to all UC majors. Uh, here are some of the courses offered in the past. Some examples of site visits and activities are uh, for the Made in Italy class, a company visit to Piaggio Factory, the Italian company that designed and started selling in the 60s, the very famous Vespa mopeds. Um, and then we have an olive oil tasting and a wine tasting for the culinary history of Italy class. And then there's a field trip to Modena, and a visit to the Ferrari headquarters for the entrepreneurship, the Italian way class. The second option in Florence is uh, still available for summer, fall semester, winter quarter, and spring semester is called Italian in Florence. As you can guess, uh, um, this is ideal for students that are seeking language credit. Uh, the program offers several levels of Italian, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Student will also be asked to take some electives, and here are a couple of examples. Uh, some visits for these courses that deserve to, to be mentioned here are the visit to the Fizzi Gallery and the Accademia Gallery, which is the museum where the Michelangelo's, very famous Michelangelo's David is held. And then for the, um, uh, this was for the Genius and Innovation in Renaissance Art class. And for the Fashion and Media, and Media in Italy class, there's a very interesting visit to either Ferragamo or Gucci headquarters um, uh, with a, a company by a guest lecture. Okay, our last stop in Italy now, it's this beautiful town located in Sicily, which is the biggest island in Italy. And the town is called Syracuse, spelled like Syracuse, but not New York, Syracuse, Sicily. 
Um, Syracuse is a small town. Uh, it's located in the southeast of, of the island. The city is, is famous for its rich Greek and Roman history, culture, amphitheaters, architecture, and as the birthplace of the very famous mathematician and engineering Archimedes. It's got a population of about 150,000 people and is considered the most beautiful city in the island. Given the history of the island and its relationship with immigration, Siracusa represents one of the few Italian cultural melting pots. This is the Sicily Center for Field Studies, where uh, you'll be taking classes, is uh, in the, located in the historical heart of Siracusa, it's uh, exactly in Piazza Duomo. And just like all the other Italian centers, it offers a classroom uh, space, a library, study areas, and a computer lab. So the first program I wanna talk about is uh, the Field Studies in Volcanology program. It is a summer program that goes for seven weeks. And uh, I would say it's ideal for geology, geophysics and earth science majors, but obviously open to all UC majors. Uh, students will take a volcanology in the Mediterranean class and then will also be required to work on a capstone research program in collaboration with the local University of Catania. Uh, one of the, the highlights, in my opinion, of this program is the work that students do closely with the INGB, which is the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology in Italy. Uh, the other Sicily program, and actually it's a multi-city program, my personal favorite, it's called Mediterranean Politics, Food and Culture, and run through, it runs through three different cities, uh, Florence, Barcelona, and Siracusa. Students will spend five weeks in each location taking an umbrella course that will be taken across all three cities and a site specific class in Florence and in Barcelona. This program covers many subjects and obviously is open to all UC majors. Okay, so now we're done with Italy and we'll, we'll move a bit north and go to France, Paris. <laughs> Excuse me. Everybody knows Paris, so I, wouldn't, I won't spend a lot of time introducing it. It's the capital city of France and it's a hub uh, for the worlds of arts, fashion and business. It's a pretty, pretty big city and it's got a population of about 2.5 million people. Um, in Paris, students will be able to choose between a shared apartments and living with a French host family. Class uh, average time, time is from 3.5 to 5 hours per day, Monday through Thursday. And classes usually begin around 9 a.m., which is enough time for the students to, you know, leave the apartment and stop by a cafe to get a coffee and a croissant. The Accent Paris, Paris Center is easily accessible by metro or bus from the apartments. It is located in the Bastille area, and it's that building in the picture, obviously. Um, um, it is surrounded by um, restaurants, cafes, bakeries, and pastry shops. It, it's in, a, it's in, in this very lively, lively neighborhood called uh, the Bastille. It has also a great variety of designer stores around. Some are a little pricey, others are less so. And just like all the other study centers um, that we talked about, um, it, will, it, it, it offers a library, study areas, computer lab, and classrooms. Okay, so this is the first Paris program. It's the Social Justice and Activism in Paris program, and it's available as a winter quarter or a spring semester. Uh, this very interesting option is ideal, in my opinion, for students that are interested in, um, you know, many subjects, but mostly sociology, political science, science and, gen and gender studies. Um, some of the courses offered are here on the slide, and some of the activities that are part of the classes are the uh, visit to the Musée de la Liberation in the Confronting Injustice class, and a visit to the Immigration Museums in the Documenting the Periphery class. Then second option in Paris is French in Paris. This program is ideal again for students that are interested in learning the French language for the most part. It is available in uh, uh, the summer as a semi-intensive or intensive and in the fall semester. Students will be able to take several level of French and also other electives. An example of the elective course after, offered in the past is history of Paris, which I put here in the slide. Um, where students will be able to learn about the very, very rich history of the city and visit places such as the Louvre Museum. Uh, the last option in Paris is the Food History and Culture in Paris program, which available, it is available only in the fall semester. This is a multidisciplinary program, um, ideal for students that are interested in humanities and social sciences. 
Here are some of the classes offered that were most popular among students in the past, uh, food and dining in French art and the writing on the walls. Uh, one, uh, one of some of the activities that the program offers are the visit to the Musée d'Orsay for food and dining in French art and visit to the Pompidou Museum and meetings with artists collectives for the writing on the walls course. Okay, done with France, we move to Spain, we're going to Madrid. Just like Rome and Paris, Madrid is a big city and the capital city of Spain. Uh, it is Spain's artistic and historical hub, but also an important European center for innovation and sustainability. In Madrid, students will be able to choose between staying in a student residence, shared apartments, or live with a Spanish host family. Madrid is a beautiful city where students usually enjoy the generally dry and sunny weather, which makes it easy to walk to class every day. They will be living in neighborhoods that are usually 20 or 30 minutes away from the accent center. Uh, all the apartments are reachable by bus or by the metro. In Madrid, students can visit the local markets because it's full of those and taste the traditional cuisine and walk around the multiple city parks such as the Parque de Retiro and Madrid Rio. This is the Madrid Study Center, uh, which is located in Chamberi neighborhood. It is a modern space, unlike the uh, previous ones that we saw, uh, and it's located in the very, very heart of Madrid. In it, you will find classrooms, a library, study areas, and a computer lab. Here's the first option for the Madrid programs uh, is Spanish in Madrid. Uh, this is an intensive language program, uh, summer program, where students can enroll in different Spanish levels during the summer. Students will also be required to take a Spanish civilization class. Some of the on-site activities on this program, so, uh, part of the Spanish civilization course are a visit to the Archaeological Museum of Madrid and a visit to the Royal Palace and the Spanish Congress. The other summer option in Madrid is a very interesting, super specific, uh, but very introductory um, Python and data science program. The program is focused, uh, is focused on engineering and computer science, but as, as I just said, the courses are introductory and are mainly for non-major students. Um, no existing knowledge is required. And some of the activities worth mentioning here in this program are a visit to a startup uh, pre-accelerator and a series of, back of guest lectures with professionals in the field. And uh, students will work directly with entrepreneurs on their startup projects, which I find very interesting. The last program option in Madrid uh, is uh, uh, Contemporary Spain Study and Intern in Madrid. Uh, students will take an intensive Spanish language class based on their level and then will be required to take three upper division electives and will be enrolled in an internship program, which is basically integrated in one of the electives of choice. Some on, some on site activities on this program are visit to a water management plant as part of the political ecologies course then a visit to a, a refugee center um, uh, as part of the immigration ethnicity and nation class and a visit to a local NGO that supports and protects LGBTQI plus community rights. Okay, last but not least, we're not going to the UK, we're going to London. Uh, London really does not need any sort of introduction. Um, it's the capital city of England and it has a population of 9 million inhabitants. It is by far the most important business and economic hub in Europe and its uh, uh, multicultural environment invites people from all over the world. In London, students will be staying in shared apartments. Uh, class takes place uh, as always at the, at the Accent Study Center, which is located in Bedford Square in the Blumsbury neighborhood. It is a short commute, either a walk or a bus ride from the student housing. The area surrounding the housing has a range of supermarkets and other amenities easily accessible to the students. Students will be in class three or four, week, uh, four days a week, usually Monday through Thursdays. Classes are typically three hours long between 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. There is usually a short break in the middle of a three hour class for students to get some uh, refreshments. Before class, students can pick up a coffee, tea and breakfast from a local cafe, including a converted red telephone box, which sells hot drinks to go. Hard to believe, but it's true. The streets surrounding the center are packed with independent restaurants and bakeries for students to get a scone or a sandwich for lunch in between classes. After class, students are free to explore London. The study center, which is this one, is a two minute walk away from Tottenham Court Road and Oxford Street. Uh, it's obviously easy accessible by uh, the, the tube stations uh, and it's on the central northern and Piccadilly line. 
The bus network also runs extensively around central London, so you can also take a bus to get there. Okay, so going to the programs. The first program uh, I want to mention is the Business and Entrepreneurship in London. It is available in as the uh, winter quarter and spring semester with the possibility of an internship in London. The program is ideal for students that are interested in business administration and economics. Some of the on-site activities on these programs that I would like to mention are the uh, business guest lecture at the Wimbledon Tennis Stadium and a guest lecture on the gig economy. And then the second uh, option is a, another multi-city program that runs between Paris and London called Global Cities and Urban Realities. This is a multidisciplinary program that would be a good fit for students interested still in social sciences and uh, humanities. The program is available as a spring quarter and a spring semester and, um, and it has an internship option program. Uh, and it's available for students that are interested in a working experience abroad. Some of the activities on site that I would like to mention are the walking tour of East London uh, for the um, landscape of health and disease class, uh, a guest lecture with professionals in the field for the poli uh, policing London class, and visit to the first French socially responsible cafe in Paris in that documenting the periphery class. Okay, and here's the very last program. Uh, it's called London's Calling. It is also a multidisciplinary program. It runs in the um, fall, and it might be a, a great for students interested in health sciences and political science. Uh, some of the on-site activities in this program are uh, a visit to the Blues Club and a walking tour of Notting Hill in the London music scene class, and a guest lecture from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Medicine for the Comparative Health UK and the US class. Uh, so, this was all on my side. I try to be as uh, you know quick as possible, but at the same time to give you enough information. I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation that you have somewhat an idea of what you might be interested in. And if you decide to go to Rome, I will be here and I will look forward to meeting you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. Yes, there you go. Thank you. Um, so as Francesco mentioned, all of these programs are specifically designed for UC, pro UC students. Um, and our programs are um, a great fit for uh, UC students with um, hundreds of options available. You will find the perfect study abroad program to suit your needs. And while on UC EAP, um, you remain enrolled in your UC campus, which means you do not need to take a leave of absence during your study abroad program and your UC financial aid goes with you. And additionally, you are guaranteed that all the courses you take abroad will receive UC credit. And we hope this presentation has provided you with a starting point on your study abroad journey and encourage you to explore the UCEAP website for detailed information about program options, finances, health and safety, and more. Um, you should visit your UC Campus Study Abroad Office website for or the uh, how to apply section on any program page on the UCEAP website for information on application steps and deadlines. And contact information for campus offices is also available through the QR code on this slide. Uh, we do offer office hours where you can schedule an appointment to have a video call with a UC EAP advisor um, to talk about our programs in, in more detail. Um, you will find the link to make an office hours appointment also through the QR code. And once you have determined which program you're going to apply to, uh, you can start an application by selecting the Apply Now button on the UCEAP website. So please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Our general email is on this slide. So thank you for attending this session. We will now move on to Q&A. Um, please send us questions in the chat box. <laughs> 